So you're still having all those weird dreams? I am never going drinking with you ever again. So you did. Come on, spill it. No. I think it's so cool that you have these crazy vivid dreams. I never have dreams. I guess I sleep right through them. What was it? Like pirates, ninjas, vikings, aliens, ninja pirates? <sighs> you're going to keep this up until I tell you, aren't you? You know it. Okay, I was standing the midwatch. Who were you standing watch with? <clears throat> Who were you standing watch with? I'll stand and watch with you. You were dreaming about me, homo. That's it, we're done, bro. Oh, come on, James, I'm just giving you crap. What was I like? Was I all crazy and crap? Nope, you were you. Except your name was Dante for some reason. Dante, Donnie, pretty close. Oh, I know. The last movie I saw this run was Clerks. Ah. So it was just us shooting the breeze on the midwatch. And... And that was pretty much it. Man, you know you've stood a lot of midwatches once you start dreaming about them. Tell me about it. You know, they should make a show like that. Like what? You know, a show with just regular military guys like us. Not some douched up piece of crap about lawyers or SEALs or pilots. People don't know what it's really like in the Navy because they're drawing their conclusions from A Few Good Men or Top Gun or Crimson Tide. Yeah, Crimson Tide was a piece of crap. You know that scene at the beginning where Gene Hackman made everybody stand in formation on the pier to give a speech? While it's pouring rain, I would have been pissed. Hey, I know we still got pre ways getting finished up, and we've got a bridge to rig, and main engines to warm up, and a million other things to get done, but I'm going to stop all work and make you guys stand in the rain on the pier so I can give you a freaking pep talk while I'm toting around my little Taco Bell dog. Yeah, they just need to make something that's based on reality, like in your dream, real life. Just a couple of guys standing in the mid-watch, having normal mid-watch conversations. You know how on Star Trek you got those guys in the background arbitrarily turning knobs and dials and pressing buttons? A show about those guys, with their everyday problems and relationships and dynamics. Who would watch a show like that? Some of the coolest, smartest, best-looking maternal copulators on the planet, that's who. Hey, did you know that Mr. Rogers was a Navy SEAL? No, he wasn't. That's an urban legend. No, it's not, man. He was a Navy SEAL sniper in Vietnam, and he had like 400 confirmed kills. You know why he always wore long sleeves on his show? Because he had full sleeve tattoos on both arms from when he was in the Navy. No, man. He was never a SEAL or a sniper, never in the Navy, okay? He went to college in Florida and graduated with a music degree, and then started working in TV right after that. And when the war started in the 60s, he was working in Canada at a TV station up there, and the first episode of Mr. Rogers neighborhood came out in 1968 like right in the middle of the war so he was never in the navy he was never a seal never served in the military it's completely untrue oh well never mind but the guy who created the simpsons he was in the navy no he wasn't yes he was matt groaning was a nuke it's pronounced graining and no he wasn't come on haven't you seen how many episodes center around the navy like when homer joins the navy and he gets stationed on that submarine and he shoots his co at the torpedo tube or when bart joins a boy band and all their songs have these subliminal navy recruiting messages oh and mr burns is totally based on admiral rickover dude no he's not yes he is go to google images and look up a picture of admiral rickover and compare it to mr burns Come on. All right, right after Matt Groening graduated from college in Washington, he moved down to L.A. and just started working a bunch of odd jobs down there. And when he was working at a newspaper down in L.A., he started making his Life as Hell comic strip, and that comic strip got so popular that James L. Brooks approached him to make cartoons for the Tracy Ullman show, and then he created The Simpsons for that and got super stinking rich and famous and never joined the Navy. In fact, you can ask him. I think you can still talk to his head in a jar at the Head Museum in New, New York. Oh. So, how do you know all this stuff? Oh, a little thing I like to call reading. Ah, so with all this reading that you do, can you tell me anybody famous that was actually in the Navy? Yeah, MC Hammer was in the Navy. Really? Yeah. And Bill Cosby was in the Navy? He was a corpsman. No kidding, I can see him as a corpsman. I don't know what happened to your medical record. You need to drink more juice and eat more jello pudding pops. Ah, ah, ah. That was the worst Bill Cosby impression I have ever heard. I know, I'm working on it. Who else? Um, like every U.S. president in the second half of the 20th century, JFK, Johnson, Nixon, Ford, Carter, H.W., um, Jesse Ventura was in the Navy. Oh, Fred Durst, the Limp Biscuit guy, he was in the Navy, but he got kicked out. He said that being in the Navy was like being in prison. Well, that's a bunch of crap, because I know for a fact that in prison, they've got cable TV. Hey, Walt Disney got kicked out of the Navy, too. Dude, just 
shut up, okay? He was never in the Navy. That's not what I heard. I heard that he got kicked out, and when he was hosting the Wonderful World of Disney, you can see his dishonorable discharge paper framed upside down behind his desk in his office. All right, his brother Roy O. Disney was in the Navy. Walt left high school when he was 16 and lied about his age to join the Ambulance Corps during World War I. He drove an ambulance in France for a couple of years, and when he got back to the States, he started making cartoons right after that. Wait, so Walt Disney dropped out of high school, served his country, and then started an animation company? Yeah. That sounds very familiar for some reason. Hmm. You know, we've only been on watch for 45 minutes. Stop bringing up the time during watch. It just makes it go slower. You mean you don't cherish every single moment that you spend up here? No. Just don't tell me what time it is. Come on, man. You know you love this crap. Um, have we met before? Yeah, you're the biggest diggit I know. I am not a diggit. Yeah, you are. You know how I know you're a diggit? You've got a Navy sticker on your car. I'm not a diggit. You're a diggit. Yeah, you're a diggit. You know how I know you're a diggit? How? You've got a tattoo of an anchor somewhere on your body. Well, you know how I know you're a diggit? How? You've got every tool known to man on your belt. A leatherman, a flashlight, a rig for red flashlight, a utility knife, a box cutter, measuring tape, something in a holster made out of duct tape. You know how I know you're a diggit? How? You refer to off-crew as pre-deployment training period. Lame! You know how I know you're a diggit? How? You've got one of those green memorandum notebooks in your pocket. You know how I know you're a diggit? How? You've got your name, rate, title, and or nickname embroidered on the back of your command ball cap. You know how I know you're a diggit? How? You sit outside the mess decks and eavesdrop on officer LPO call. You know how I know you're a diggit? How? You actually have your NKO password memorized. You know how I know you're a diggit? How? You've got a NAM, and it's not your end of tour, thanks for playing, good job for staying out of trouble, NAM. You know how I know you're a diggit? How? Because you get genuinely upset whenever somebody uses the term bathroom, or floor, or stairs, or place where we eat, or o'clock. You know how I know you're a diggit? How? Because you lick your chief's balls. You know how I know you're a diggit? How? Because you lick my chief's balls. Oh, well played, sir. Oh, well, thank you.